Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is all about my skincare journey. I have been meaning to do this video for just the longest time, so I am very excited to finally be doing it. I used to really struggle with, well, I still do struggle with pigmentation, but I used to have a lot of freckles. It was as a result of my childhood. I grew up in Cyprus, which is very hot and very sunny, and sunscreen definitely wasn't as much of a thing then, and so I got a lot of sun damage as a result of that. It took me me a lot of time, effort and money to kind of get my skin as clear as it is today and by no means is it perfect but it's definitely a lot better than it was. I'd say pigmentation is my biggest kind of area of concern but I've also had to deal with some mild acne and over time some fine lines as well so those are my three areas um, but definitely pigmentation is always a big focus for me so I'm going to be going over everything that I did, everything that I still do. I hope you guys enjoy this and find it useful especially if you have some of the same skin concerns and let's get started. So the first and the biggest thing I did in terms of the impact on my skin was I underwent three rounds of laser treatment for pigmentation. And I would say I'm not an expert on laser treatment. I don't know the ins and outs of it. When I went for the consultation, I didn't even know that's what I wanted to go for. I just knew I wanted to try and find a more heavy duty solution to my pigmentation issues. So didn't know I'd go for laser treatment. They laid out a few different options for me. I ultimately decided to go for laser treatment just because of the lack of downtime. I was working in an office every day then and I just didn't want to take any time off. So I did go for the laser treatment. It was quite a while ago. I think it was like seven or eight years ago. So my memory is a little bit foggy um, But I do remember that it was extremely painful definitely the most painful thing I've ever experienced um, It was not pleasant um, It felt kind of like an elastic band hitting your skin but repeatedly over and over again even when your skin was really raw so deeply unpleasant um, and basically what it did, I think it lasted about mm, maybe 20 minutes in total, 20 minutes of pretty high intensity pain. Um, and then afterwards, and this is like the craziest thing, your freckles literally like peel off your skin over the course of the next 24 hours. It is nuts. Um, the freckles get very, very dark indeed, and then they literally just fall off. Never experienced anything like it. Um, so the first session was definitely a shock. I then uh, did two more sessions. I don't remember exactly how far apart, but I think they were a few weeks apart. And then obviously by the third session, there was, well, I wouldn't say hardly any freckles, but they were much reduced from the first time. Some things to keep in mind if you are considering any kind of laser treatment is um, one, I would always recommend doing a patch test and I did a patch test um, which is how I decided to go for that treatment but having um, one laser zap is very different from having many so I would ask to do a couple rather than just one. I definitely would have liked that information beforehand um, and also as much as they tell you there's no downtime, I did go back to the office on my first kind of trip to the clinic and I went back after my lunch and everyone looked at me like I was an alien so I had to explain what I'd had done but I would definitely not go back to an office or do anything other than go straight home afterwards because your skin looks just very extreme afterwards and not only are the freckles like a hundred times more prominent but your face is really red as well so for me it's definitely a go to the clinic and then go straight home one. As I said though, I'm really not an expert when it comes to laser treatment, so my biggest recommendation is to find a clinic that you know and that you trust, and then ask them for their advice, because they'll be able to advise you about what the best method is. I wouldn't necessarily recommend the clinic that I went to. I've since been to Harley Medical Group for laser hair removal on my face, and I really liked them, and I would absolutely trust them, so. That's one you can give a try if you live in London, um, but otherwise just look at Google reviews. I always find them to be so helpful. Um, but yeah, I would definitely just kind of trust the doctors and the experts, but that particular laser treatment did work very well for me. So after I did my laser treatment, I thought this is amazing. Yes, it was painful and my skin is so clear, I'm done. Um, and then I'd say about, maybe six to nine months later, 
I was beginning to see the freckles come back and I was like, what is this? I thought I was finished. Um, and that's really not the case. So I compare it to if any of you have had braces and you didn't keep up with your retainer, it's exactly the same thing. I didn't keep up with my retainer when I had braces. That's why I had to fix them the second time. And it's the same with skincare, especially pigmentation. It is not a one and done thing. It is a lifelong maintenance thing. And I did wear sunscreen, but I wasn't anywhere near as militant as I should have been. And so for that reason, and the freckles did come back, albeit not nearly to the level that they once were. So because of that, I actually ended up doing something called the Obagi Regime. Some of you may have heard of it. It is pretty well known and I have mentioned it somewhat briefly before on my channel, but it's essentially more of a kind of product-based regime. I actually did it with my mum in the run-up to my wedding and it's really effective at also targeting pigmentation, but also aging as well. It is a prescription one. You can get non-prescription products, but they aren't the same strength as the ones that you get from an actual clinic. So this is what I use the Harley Medical Group for as well. And it was fantastic. I think it's a seven step program. So it is fairly intensive. And essentially you have a very strict regime of products in both the morning and the night. And it kind of just works at peeling away your skin. I would say though that the side effect of this is that you know, your skin is quite irritated, not for the whole length of time, but I'd say certainly the first couple of months, there is a lot of peeling, there's a lot of irritation. And if you work in an office every day, you know, it's not so bad that like I wouldn't go out, but it was definitely something I was aware of. And on more than one occasion, I had put makeup on and I looked at my face in the middle of the day and it was kind of like peeling off because of the skin irritation. So. Something to keep in mind, um, but the results are amazing and your skin does get so crystal clear. It really is incredible. And it's not just the pigmentation as well, but it acts as a kind of clarifier for your whole skin. So as I mentioned, it's also anti-aging and it just really works to brighten up your overall complexion. fast forward to present day and I don't really do any treatments like that anymore. Um, I feel like I've done those. I really got the results that I wanted and was really happy with. And now I focus on a little bit targeting pigmentation, albeit in a much more kind of tamer way. And I also really focus on sun damage prevention as well. So I'm going to go over all the products I use. I have them right here. So I literally have a bucket full of my products right here. So the products that I try and use, for me, it's a balance between being kind of of medical grade effective along with being fun and a pleasure to use and you know when you go really far into like skincare groups on Facebook and stuff like that you can get very easily sucked into you need to reapply sunscreen eight times a day never go out in the sun you can't use anything with fragrance like it can get very extreme so I try to strike a balance of very effective products but also products that I really enjoy using and kind of make me excited to do my skincare routine, which I do think is really important, at least for me, in order to get me to stick to it. So in terms of cleansers, I mentioned this one before, um, but I love the Elemis Pro Collagen Cleansing Balm. I use both the rose one and the normal one. I like both equally. It just depends on whether you like the rose fragrance or not. Uh, I discovered this just earlier in the year at Christmas time because my sister-in-law gave me a whole Elemis gift set and I just fell in love with so many of their products. It's absolutely amazing. I love the scent, I love the texture, and it really makes your skin feel so clean without feeling overly tight. I do use this with a little muslin cloth. I get mine from Yves Lom. One very important thing to note though is you have to be very gentle because you don't wanna break the skin's barrier and cause any irritation. So I am very, very gentle, but I do love this cleanser. I think it's just absolutely gorgeous. Another cleanser that I sometimes use, I do kind of swap in and out of these, is the Tata Harper, and this one is the Nourishing Oil Cleanser. It just kind of depends what I feel like on the day. I do like to have a few different options depending on how much of a rush I'm in, what I'm feeling like, you know, with my skin, is it feeling overly tight like all those different elements but this is another one Tata Harper in general just has an amazing skincare line I've been using her products for a few years and they're just fantastic and this is a really lovely cleanser as you can see I'm almost out of it so I do need to get another one um, but this is another really lovely cleanser in the morning after cleansing, I do use my new face. I swear by this thing. I've used it for absolutely years and I love it. It's just a skin sculpting device. Really great. Mine is the new face mini. Uh, you can also get the larger one and it does the same thing. This is just a miniature size, but still going strong. Haven't need to replace it. And I just absolutely love it. 
Next up is a toner and I'm not gonna lie, I'm getting a bit suspicious of this one because I love it and it was super affordable. It's a Korean one, it's the Essence Toner. But I've used this every single day for the past two months and it's still up to there. I don't know what happens because I checked back on it. I actually bought a replacement because I was like, oh gosh, like I don't wanna run out of this. And it just doesn't go down. I don't know what's happening. There's some kind of witchcraft involved, but not only is this very affordable, but it lasts and lasts. And it's genuinely one of the best toners I've ever used. It just sinks into your skin. It leaves it feeling so kind of moisturized, but not kind of overly sticky. It's just a really nice base layer before you put any other products on. And I'm just totally obsessed with it. I absolutely love it, would highly recommend. Don't know how widely available it is, but I will try and find links and then put it below. Um, but definitely one of my favorite skincare discoveries over the past year. After a toner, I then pop on my eye cream. And um, to be honest, I'm not particularly wedded to this one. This one is great for nighttime use, but I recently ran out of my daytime eye cream and I've just not gotten a replacement yet. So this is one I'm currently using for day and night, but to be honest, it's a little bit thick to be using for day. It's from SkinCeuticals and it's called the Eye Balm. It is nice, but as you can see, like it's very, very thick. Um, so I tend to use this as like a really thick, nice cream to kind of soak in overnight can use it for day but a bit thick in my opinion um, but it is a nice one for evening and what I'm currently using for day as well. After eye cream I then use some serums so these are both from SkinCeuticals. I have repurchased these I want to say like four times now so they are a heavy rotation one for me. I use these every single morning so the first one is <laughs> I don't know how you say it, uh, Floritin, CF, if that's how it's pronounced. Um, and then this one is a discoloration defense serum. Um, so both are there basically in order to target pigmentation, to correct, and then also to prevent any further sun damage. I like them both a lot. Um, as I've said, you know, I've repurchased these four times over. So would definitely recommend if you have similar kind of skin concerns, they absorb really, really quickly and I just think that they do a job. So they are expensive, but I do find that a little bit goes a long way and I really, really like them both. Next up is a moisturizer and I do tend to go pretty thin with my layers here because obviously I do layer in quite a few different skincare products. So these aren't kind of really thick layers or anything like that. But the one I'm using at the moment is the Elemis Pro Collagen Marine Cream. Really nice day cream. Um, it's not overly thick, so you can just do a nice thin layer, but you still get that moisturizing element as well. And it absorbs very, very quickly as well. Just a really nice consistency, a very, very solid day cream. And then the final and most important layer is sunscreen. I cannot emphasize this enough. If you undergo any kind of pigmentation treatment, whether that's Obagi, laser or something else, and you don't keep up with sunscreen, you are literally just throwing your money away. I let that the hard way, take it from me. So I am very militant with my sunscreen now. I apply it every single day, regardless of whether I'm going out. If I do know that I'm going out and it's a sunny day, I will also reapply as well. As I said, I did go through a phase of literally reapplying multiple times a day, um, but I'm less militant about that now if I'm not going out. If I am, I will still do it. Um, but otherwise, I just put some on during the morning. And I do think it really, really helps. So I have a few different favorites. So I do kind of chop and change. But these are the ones that I'm currently using. Um, so this one is from Thank You Pharma. This is a Korean one and Korean sunscreens. I always feel like are so great. I've tried a whole bunch of them and they're always just a very, very nice consistency and generally don't leave a white cast either. So this is just the Sun Project Water Sunscreen um, or Sun Cream, sorry. I've bought this, I don't even know how many times. Really good. It is, it's not like super, super crazy affordable, but it's definitely not as expensive as some other sunscreens on the market. And it really does just have a very nice consistency and is SPF 50 as well. The other favorite of mine I have is the Super Goop Play. This is also SPF 50. Again, a really lovely consistency. It just kind of glides on, sinks in really easily, and it's just a very nice texture. I also have a sometimes use the glow screen, and I actually sometimes use this as an additional layer of sunscreen. It does have like, I wouldn't say like it's a big tint, but there's definitely, like, if you can see that, a little bit of color. So I like to use this under um, foundation. I wouldn't usually wear this by itself, um, but as a kind of primer sunscreen layer, I do think it's really, really nice. 
switching to nighttime now and my night routine does vary according to kind of what I'm doing and also what makeup I've worn during the day. Um, for very heavy makeup days, either when I'm gonna spend all day out or I'm filming or something like that, then I will kind of double cleanse and I will take off the first layer of makeup with this cleansing water. This is just from Garnier, really inexpensive, but I just really like to make sure that all my makeup is off so that my pores aren't getting all clogged up. I use exactly the same cleansers as I use during the morning and then I also add in the Paula's Choice Skin Perfecting 2% BHA Liquid Exfoliant. Um, quite a mouthful but this is really good if you do have congested pores, blackheads it's really good for as well and it's really helped my acne on my chin area. That's generally where I tend to get breakouts, I don't really get breakouts anywhere else but definitely on my chin area and this one really has helped. I would say that this one does take a little bit of perseverance because I definitely have had that skin purging element. The first few weeks I did have a lot more blemishes, but if you power through that and if you have similar skin to me, it is a really effective product. I do also use my Glow Pro, but I do this with a certain set of products, and then when I'm using my other set of products, I don't use this for reasons I'll explain in a second, but still use my Glow Pro, which is a micro needling tool. Spoken about it many times before, but definitely a really great one for just kind of preventing fine lines and just having really plump, healthy looking skin. When I do use the Glow Pro, I do just go for a simple serum, and I wouldn't say there's like one that I'm particularly wedded to, um, but the one that I'm using at the moment, and I have repurchased this one before as well, is the Dr. Nigma Serum Number no. One. Um, just a really nice kind of hydrating serum, but as I mentioned, I use a few different ones depending on what catches my eye. I will only use those serums and the Glow Pro though if I'm not currently using Tret. Um, so Tret is a prescription only ingredient, and this is one of the ways I kind of keep my pigmentation under control, along with sunscreen being the other really important element. So Tread isn't particularly widely known unless I think you have this issue, um, but it's essentially a similar product to um, a retinol product, which I'm sure many of you have heard of. I feel like every skincare ingredient out there at the moment is talking about retinol. They both come under the umbrella of retinoids, and basically retinol is a derivative of vitamin A and that's the kind of natural version, whereas Tret is the synthetic version of vitamin A. It's a little bit more potent and powerful, which is why it's prescription only, whereas retinol products you can just get in regular skincare products. Hopefully that wasn't too kind of jargony for you, um, but you can only get this by prescription, which I can do because I do have a pigmentation issue. So I do use it in a few different forms. So this one is from Obagi as part of the Obagi line. Um, and then this one is from Dermatico, which is a skincare kind of dermatology startup, I think. I don't know if it's worldwide, um, but it is available in the UK and they do formulate their own. So I like both. They kind of do the same thing. It just depends on the strength and kind of what you're going for. But these are prescription only. So if you do have a similar skin concern, they're definitely worth contacting a dermatologist to see if it'd be right for you. I feel like a medical ad, but it really does work and it really does help to keep my pigmentation under control. Regardless of whether I'm using Tret or a simple serum at the time though, I will always finish my regime off with a nice night cream or kind of a general moisturizer. So when I am using Tret, I will use either the Obagi Hydrate, very simple moisturizer, obviously designed for very intense moisturizing. Um, but I also have this more affordable version, which is also very nice as well. This is from Avene, and this is the Skin Recovery Cream. Really only suitable if you want a very thick moisturizer. So I like to use this both in winter and also when using Tret because it does have a tendency to dry your skin out. Otherwise, I will just use another moisturizer from just a regular brand. In terms of how often I use Tret versus a kind of regular serum, I would say that it's more like maybe three to four nights a week I will use Tret, and then the other days a week I will just use a regular serum. But it does depend on what my skin's doing, how I'm feeling, how much time I have, all that kind of thing. And um, if I know, you know, I have a big event or a holiday coming up, I'll ease back on the Tret just because I don't want any skin irritation and I've been using it for quite a few years now and even now I can kind of have a bit of a flare up and my skin might get a bit irritated or peeling. Um, so I tend to ease off it if I know I have something coming up, um, but otherwise I do tend to rotate in and out most weeks. Just a little disclaimer as well, because I am aware I was talking about prescription products here. Obviously, um, I would always recommend just going to see a dermatologist if you can, or a doctor, and asking what's right for your skin. I was prescribed these products, which is kind of how I built up my routine. Uh, and it's also through a lot of trial and error, you know, uh, products like this really affect people in very, very different ways. So 
always, you know, talk to an actual expert. You know, I'm just talking about what worked for my own skin, um, but talk to an expert and it's always a case of trial and error as well to see what works well for you. So that is it for this video guys. I hope you enjoyed it, you found it useful, especially if you have some similar skin concerns to me. I hope I covered what you wanted to know, but if I missed anything out, then leave me a comment down below and I'll try and get that to you. I will try and leave links to everything I discussed, but again, if I missed anything out, then drop me a note. If you enjoyed the video, please do give this a thumbs up. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next one. Bye guys. Thank you.